Are you ready to drink from the fire hose of space knowledge, Commander? Open wide! <laughs> but before you take a sip off the fire hose, make sure you head over to the training section and complete the training simulations as well as the challenge scenarios. This will teach you how to take off and land, plot courses, and do combat, which is very important if you want to have the very best start that you possibly can. In this Elite Dangerous Beginner's Guide for 2021, I'm going to show you how to go from the starter ship, which is the Sidewinder, all the way to the very end game, Anaconda. In order to progress rapidly, we are going to be doing combat, exploration, as well as mining. I'm going to share with you my newbie home system location, where you can get ships and modules on the cheap. Last but not least, we will have earned over a billion credits, which will give us Elite in Trading, granting us access to Shannara Desra. Not only do you need to unlock this system for engineering purposes later down the road, this system sells every single ship and every single module within the game. My goal is to get you to 1 billion, 50 million in assets, which will get this system unlocked for you. I'm going to help you get into some of the very best endgame ships that Elite Dangerous has to offer, but we're going to do it really fast. But most importantly, I'm going to share with you all the tips and tricks I wish I knew when I was a space noob all those years ago. Alright, that's enough jaw flapping, let's get down to business. As soon as you log into Elite Dangerous for the very first time, you're going to find a Welcome to the Galaxy mission under your Transactions tab. If you press the Open Galaxy Map button, you'll notice that your mission is located in the Drami system just one jump away. However, we will not be heading over to Moss and Dock quite yet to drop off our mission. We're going to head over to that blue gas giant first to lay some smack down on the pirates. Word of caution, my young Padawan commander, combat is very dangerous in Elite. If you make the mistake of shooting a bad guy before your scan goes through, or you accidentally shoot a good guy, well, you're going to get your butt blown off. If you happen to get scraped off the bottom of someone's space boot, that means you have lost every single bounty you have collected up to that point that you haven't cashed in yet, and you don't want that to happen, Commander. Before we jump into combat, let me show you a few things that's going to really help your gameplay. Down on your radar, in the very center, you are represented by the triangle, and the triangle cone shooting off the front of that is your field of vision. The next thing that you'll notice is you have multiple boxes and triangles attached to little sticks going upwards and downwards. Targets attached to sticks going upwards means they are above your field of vision, and the ones that are attached to sticks below means they are below your field of vision. A solid square and a solid triangle represents an NPC pilot. A triangle means that that target has their weapon points out. The grayed out boxes represents a FSD trail when someone warps out of here, or an item that you can actually physically pick up in the game. If you play in open and see either a hollow triangle or a hollow square, that is an actual player character within Elite Dangerous. The bar to the left hand side of your radar is your heat gauge. Right now it reads 44%, you do not want it to go past that first line or you can take module damage. The little globe to the left of your heat gauge is your target indicator. If the dot is solid, that means your target is in front of you. If it's hollow, that means it's behind you. To the left of that is what you have currently targeted, and for me it's the Drami system. To the right hand side of your radar is your speed gauge. If you keep your little bar within that red area, you can actually maneuver your ship much better. To the right of that will be an icon of the current ship you are flying right now, as well as your shield strength and your hull integrity. Next to that will be your distributor power output for system engines and weapons. I highly recommend that you make hotkeys for each one of those so you can easily switch power between each one when you need it. Last but not least you have your fuel gauge, your mass lock, landing gear, and cargo scoop indicators. Your main weapons fire group should already be set since you haven't changed out your weapons. You're going to have pulse lasers on one. I'm also going to add my discovery scanner to a fire group just so I can make a little extra exploration money as we go. It is now that space time, commanders. I'm going to throw you to the wolves. As soon as you pop into the high res site, NPCs are going to start spawning. You're going to need to start scanning each one of those and to do that you just target them and basically look at them until the scan goes through. If you attack anybody before your scan goes through, even if they are a space scumbag, the popos are going to break their boots off in your ass so quickly, you're not going to know what hit you. 
generally it doesn't take all that long for the beef to start happening so what I like to do is just kind of fly around scan some ships and just wait for weapons fire <laughs> fire <laughs> fire fire once you have located the beef fly over there with the quickness and most definitely scan the ship before you decide to open fire on it the very best way to keep yourself from getting space killed is to wait for the shields to go all the way down and I like to wait for them to at least get down to about 40% health and then I'm going to let them have it. Now I most definitely can't stress this enough, the Sidewinder is basically a box of flying space Kleenex. You do not want to pick up aggro from any of these bigger, larger NPC ships. Alright, so let's say for whatever reason you screw it up and the space popos are totally trying to kick your teeth in. That is a Kobayashi Maru. It is a no-win situation. You immediately need to stow your weapons and get the heck on out of there. Engage your FSD, put as much power to systems and engines as you possibly can. If you were lucky enough to engage your FSD before you blow up into space dust, what you'll want to do is open up your navigation panel and find a system that will be represented in green. This means it's a low security system and you can pay your fine there and get right back to the action. Now there are a couple more things I want to cover before we get on to the Exploding Space Pirates compilation. There is a major difference between the high res site here that I'm at right now in Drami compared to the one out in Nanabozoho that I did in the multiplayer best start. Over in Nanabozoho, you get many more large ships to spawn into these high res sites on the bad guys side, which means you get a huge boost to your pocketbook per kill. This place is good for those commanders who want to do the minimum amount of combat and just get right into a hauler and get right to exploration. Although you can make money here in Drami, your best bet is to head over to Nanabozoho and do your combat over there. You will make money about twice as fast. So you see that rewards claim that keeps popping up in the upper right hand corner of my screen? Well each and every single time that pops up, you're actually getting paid more than it's telling you. Recently, FDev went through and rebalanced pretty much the entire game on how you make money, and combat got a boost. They just didn't get around to updating those messages yet. In order to see the exact dollar amount and bounty claims that you currently have, you need to head over to your transaction tab under bounties, and it will display exactly how much you've earned. Just make sure you don't die, Commander. You are now faced with your first choice. You can either do combat until you save up 1.4 million, you'll then do exploration in the hauler to make money, or you can keep plowing ahead at one of these high resource extraction sites until you save up at least 16 million to buy the Asp Explorer. For the next step in our get rich quick scheme, I decided to go exploration. The last time I did exploration was just before the game rebalance, so I'd like to see just how the changes affect my pocketbook. Alright, so in order to save time on this video, I did head over to Moss and Dock and cash in that 10k mission. Immediately I had another option for 100k, Welcome to the Galaxy, which sent me over here to Lamarack Orbital in the Nani Nani Boo Boo system. Now that 100k mission might not sound like a lot, but the main thing about that is when you turn it in, you actually get faction with the people that send you out on wing and personal pirate missions, which will give you even more missions to select. Mission availability is directly tied to your current faction with these mission givers, so most definitely if you're going to plow ahead with combat, turn in that 100k mission here before you try to stack any combat missions. Oops, I almost space choked. I did turn in all of my bounty vouchers over at Moss and Dock. You can cash in your bounty vouchers by just clicking on the contacts, then the system authority. Now that we have a little space cheddar squirreled away, I'm going to invest some of that money into purchasing the hauler so we can make even more money doing exploration. Here is the build I'll be going with for the hauler, and all the modules that you need for this build are located here at this station, which is really handy. Never fear, Commander, every single build that I highlight in this video will be linked in the description for your ease of access. Now that you have your hauler completely pimped out and ready to go, it is now time to set up your fire groups and all you really need to do is just set up your discovery scanner as well as your detailed surface scanner. Now that you have your hauler completely and totally pimped out for making money, it is worth mentioning that I have already completed a guide called the Road to Riches, which is how you make money via exploration in Elite Dangerous. I will gloss over exploration in this video, but I highly recommend that you check out my Road to Space Bucks. Now you're not going to make a lot of money quickly unless you know exactly where to go and that's where edtools.cc comes into play. This Road to Riches website will show you exactly where to go to find the most juiciest of planets that pay the most in Elite Dangerous. 
Now this website is super easy to use. All you have to do is head over to the little clipboard icon, click on it, it'll turn the name red, which means it copied the system name for you. Now all you have to do is head over to your navigation panel, click on the plot course tab, and then paste in that system name. Here we are in system number one, and it is a bit weird because the planet location says conversion, so I guess I'm just gonna look at the system map and figure it out on my own. Well, that was really easy. It's obviously number four because it said it was an Earth-like world. In order to make that planet really easy to find, make sure you target it in the menu. Now that you have that juicy Earth-like world targeted, it's really easy to use your targeting globe to get right centered on the planet. At this point, you either want to use your discovery scanner right now to honk the system, or you can just engage your FSS once you slow down. Seeing as how I haven't done exploration in a space minute, I completely forget to use my discovery scanner, so I am going to have to use my discovery scanner within the FSS itself. And now you know why it's called honking. Now all you have to do is fine tune the meter to the proper spectrum, which will highlight the planet or moon white. There you go. Scan is complete. Based off of the tool, we already know that there is only one planet that is worth a damn in the system to scan, so it is now time to leave. I am now going to copy and paste system number two, which happens to be Trappist-1, one, one of my favorite systems. This tool keeps up with everywhere you go, as long as you tell it so, so make sure you click visit it as yes. Now this footage of the Trappist system is actually pretty funny, because it's true. The planets and moons that orbit Trappist-1 are so close to the star that you literally don't even have to scan them, because the second you pop in, you already know them. Well, that was really easy. I guess it's time to head to the next system. We have just arrived in Ross 298, which is our third system in the list. Now I'm going to talk about two extremely important things in Elite Dangerous. First, never fly without a rebuy. Make sure you have enough to buy your ship again if you die. And two, if you ever decide to head out into the black, away from the bubble, most definitely take a fuel scoop with you. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm using a fuel scoop to fill up my gas tank. If you decide to break any one of those two rules, Commander, you are setting yourself up for possible disaster. If you want any more information on exploration, specifically surface scanning of planets and moons, make sure to check out my Road to Space Bucks. Let's jump to the point where I have scanned all 30 of these systems. Some have multiple planets. Was it worth it? Now that we're ready to cash in all this exploration data, let me show you my very favorite newbie home base location, which is Diagwandry. So why is Ray Gateway in Diagwandry so glorious? Well, it's quite simple, my dear Watson. First off, it's located in Lee Young Space, so you get a discount on all ships and modules. All of the ships and the majority of the modules we will be needing to purchase in order to progress quickly can be bought right at this station. Diagwandry itself is located in a great place within the bubble, and last but not least, there is a material trader located here. Alright, so when I filmed the Road to Space Bucks, I scanned 10 systems, and scanning those 10 systems earned me 8 million credits. Now, I scanned 30 this time, so I'm expecting much more. In order to turn in your exploration data, you'll have to click on Universal Cartographics, wait for a little bit for it to load, and then feel like you just got totally ripped off because I only made 13.5 million on this trip, and I scanned 30 systems. I did a little more field testing after shooting all the footage for this best start, and I did determine that you must scan the surface of these planets, not do it from a distance if you want to make a whole bunch of money. After the rebalance to exploration, it seems like FDEV slightly nerfed the long-range exploration tactics and buffed the actual scans of the planets and moon surfaces. Regardless, we have plenty of money to get ourselves into the Asp Explorer, which is our very next ship we're going to buy in order to progress really quick. We will now focus our efforts into mining. Now you're going to have two choices and it totally depends on the price, but you can do either laser or core mining. Market prices for these precious minerals kind of have an ebb and flow, like they'll suck one week and then they'll be glorious the next. Well, right now, pretty much all laser mining locations suck except for platinum. Mining platinum in this ship will not make me the money I want fast enough, so we are going to go to my go-to place, which 95% of the time is the very best place to mine in the game, and that's the double muscovite hotspot. Now I'm going to show two builds here. One is for core and one is for laser. Now when you watch this video, you never know. Laser mining might actually be profitable, and as long as painite is paying over 400 a ton, well, do the painite. 
The main thing I love about Muscovite is it always seems to have a really, really good price. And on top of that, it always has a really high demand, higher than most other elements. For the remainder of this guide, we will be making our 1 billion 50 million by farming Muscovite. Seeing as how I already have a core and laser mining video for 2021 specifically geared for space noobs just like you, I highly recommend that you check both of those videos out. For the remainder of this video, we will be doing muscovite mining in GCRV 375, which is relatively close to Diagondri. In order to stay up to date with the current prices on the daily, you want to check out three different websites. One of them is eddb.io, the second one is anara.cz, and last but not least, the one we're going to be using is the miner's tool. Once you arrive in GCRV 375, head over to that turd looking gas giant. It happens to be planet number two. You're going to be spending a lot of time here. Now you have absolutely no hope in finding any of these hot spots unless you use the surface scanner to scan these rings. Once you scan those rings, those hot spots are going to pop out like a sore thumb. And all you have to do is find the double overlapping muscovite hotspot and you can start raking it in. But Hawks, everyone keeps telling me that double overlapping core hotspots don't really matter. It doesn't help you find any more cores. That might be entirely true. However, my RNGesus is really good here, so I just come here. It's like the best spot that I've ever mined for Muscovite, so it is what it is. Now that we're in the field and we are ready to do a little bit of mining, let's go over the fire groups. Now I won't need my discovery or detailed surface scanner while I'm doing this, so I'm just going to get rid of them. For fire group 1, we will have our pulse wave analyzer on 1, prospector on 2. Fire group 2 will be seismic charge launcher on 1, collector limpets on 2, as well as my abrasion blasters on 2. This is the ultimate lazy commander setup for core mining. Not long ago, I created a very detailed guide on how to do muscovite mining right in this exact same ring, so I highly recommend that you check out that video. I am going to gloss over the core mining just like I did for the exploration. As you can see right now, I am in the third person camera mode and I'm just kind of looking around using my detailed surface scanner and right there is a core. Notice that shape. Now I'm going to tell you right now, hunting cores takes a little bit of practice and most of that practice is just figuring out the shape. Now the brightness sometimes doesn't really matter because a lot of these smaller rocks are going to be just as bright. What you mostly want to focus on is that shape as well as all those black grid light patterns that keep on popping up every time I hit the pulse wave and eventually they highlight into really black patches like that and then flash back to a bright yellow. Only core asteroids will do this, but if you want to make sure that you're not wasting a prospector limpet, just look on the surface, you will find fissures all over the place. Right on, that's the pepper. That's exactly what we're looking for, a muscovite core. Now keep in mind, just because this is a muscovite hotspot, it doesn't mean you're only going to find muscovite cores. There are going to be multiple other types out here in the field. Muscovite, though, is worth the most, so that's what I'm going for. And just a second ago, you noticed that I turned on my night vision. That really helps highlight these fissures that are sprinkled all over the surfaces of these core asteroids. Time to crack this puppy open. I have a low strength fissure targeted and I did a full charge with the seismic charge launcher. Now I'm hoping I can find another low strength really close by and do the exact same thing. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't charge it up all the way. It was just past three quarters. So let's find one more fissure and then I'm just gonna tap it. I'm just gonna barely put any power into this at all. Once you get that detonation yield and that two bar strip right down the middle, you are ready to detonate your charges. Now make sure that you back away at least a kilometer or you can get caught up in the explosion and blow yourself up, Commander. Ah, that never gets old. It is now time to open up your cargo scoop, and don't worry, by this time you won't have any pirates picking on you. Then you just go out with your abrasion blaster and blow off all the surface chunks so your little collector limpets can pick them all up for you. The one thing I do really love about core hunting, besides the skill of it all and seeing all those explosions, I love the explosions, is that these chunks that I'm blowing off are freaking ridiculously huge. They are worth almost a ton each, which means you are gonna fill up very quickly opposed to doing laser mining. Now don't get me wrong, laser mining can rival this amount of money only if the prices are right, and right now they're not. So in a nutshell, the ultimate two tips that I'm giving out in this video is using the third person cinematic camera to locate cores, as well as getting used to that unique shape they have. 
A Muscovite core will always be this shape, it will always be this bright, and it will always highlight those really black grid-like patterns when you get close to it. All right, one more explosion because I love them. <sighs> then let's cut to the chase where I got my whole cargo filled up. It looks like we are going to be leaving behind a bunch of extra Muscovite, which is unfortunate, but oh well, we are completely topped off right now. It looks like our vacuum moss is paying the highest dollar amount per ton, so we're going to go there. The unfortunate thing is, the very next day they spiked it over a million per ton. Here we are at the cell location. Total time in the field from taking off in Diaguandre to landing here was 45 minutes. That's pretty good considering this cell location is 151 light years away. Keep in mind, Commander, I am a pro. I'm pretty daggone good at finding these cores and getting them busted and back to the cell location quickly. You can do that too, once you get the practice in. And notice how I'm getting paid a little bit less than what the miner's tool told me? That's because other commanders are beating me to the punch and selling their muscovite here just before me, which is going to lower the price a bit because there won't be as much demand. But yeah, I'm not going to complain too much, considering less than two hours ago and two trips later, I went from 2 million to 118 million. Hell yeah. Once you have completed your second trip doing Muscovite, it will now be time to purchase the glorious Python. She is most definitely your ticket to the Billionaires Club. She might not be the most beautiful ship in the world, but she does one thing exceptionally well. She's one of the best mining what in the bleach any bleach? Ah! <laughs> Good luck on seeing that one. Like I was trying to say before, the Python is totally glorious at mining. It can actually carry three times as much as that ass. And as long as prices hold out, we're going to be able to get to Shannara Desra in six more trips. Alright, so seeing as how we're basically doing the exact same thing but in a Python, let's go over the Python Jack of All Trades build. This build is perfect for the lazy commander who just can't be troubled with taking mining lasers off and putting them back on whenever you're out muscovite mining. Whenever the price is right, when pay night spikes over 400k, well you can swoop right in there faster than everybody else because you didn't take the 3 minutes it took to put those lasers back on there. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Uh, yeah, I forgot to record. Almost bought the anaconda. Cha-ching! There you have it, by trip number six in the Python, we have reached elite in trading. But because I'm greedy. There's always room for one oh. more. Cha-ching! Jesus, I'm tired. Let's say we get our butts on over to Shannara Desert and treat ourselves to two brand new ships. So you made it to Jamison Memorial, which happens to be the coolest place to base out of in Elite Dangerous. So really, what should you focus on next? I highly recommend that you put serious thought into banging out all of your engineers as quickly as you can. And the good news is, I have the most glorious engineers guide that is on YouTube, so make sure you check that out. As well as work on checking out the Guardian sites, they have a lot of really useful upgrades. And hell, while you're doing all that, you can also work on your faction with the Federation as well as the Empire and get yourself the Cutter and the Corvette, which are absolutely badass. Once you have all that stuff sorted, you then have my permission to start saving up for your fleet carrier. Keep in mind it's going to cost 5 billion to purchase it, another billion to outfit it, and you're going to need some spare cheddar for its upkeep. Getting your hands on the Anaconda used to be considered winning the game. Unfortunately now, it means getting a fleet carrier, but this ship is still pretty daggone awesome. I love it. This is kind of an optional purchase if you want to play in open. Go ahead and snag yourself a Type 9. This ship will help you greatly doing the power play missions. There are only two ships within Elite Dangerous that can complete the power play mission in one round. That is the Type 9, which doesn't require faction, and the Cutter, which requires a whole bunch. It is now time to take out my freshly bought Anaconda for a joyride. Man, this is just like the very first time I bought my Anaconda. I got goosebumps. I'm super excited. I went through the struggles to get here. Now I get to reap the rewards. Seriously, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It is my hope that this How to Have the Very Best Start in Elite Dangerous Beginner's Guide was very helpful to your gameplay. If it was, please consider subscribing to my channel, giving this video a like, and commenting down below on how helpful this guide was to your gameplay. If you have any questions at all whatsoever, feel free to comment down below or hop into our Discord channel. I have a ton of admins that are very active and they're very good at answering your questions. Well, I think my work's done here. That's a wrap. Catch you in the next video, Commanders. Peace. Ah!